Yo, what's good guys? Chewy here. Welcome back to ARPG Gaming. You ever find yourself looking for a game to play? You did all you had to do for your current games patch and you just want something new to binge on again? Today I want to share 5 hidden gem ARPGs I keep in my back pocket for when I'm in a gaming low. Each of these games I've sunk hundreds of hours into and I still regularly come back to. They have engaging action gameplay for the mechanical geniuses and addictive RPG elements that keeps me coming back to try new builds. I love these games and I know at least one of these will get you hooked. Here are 5 hidden gem ARPGs that you should play. Let's start this off with number 5, Chronicon. Chronicon had me hooked for a solid month when I first found it. It's a pixel style top down ARPG, very similar formula to the Path of Exiles and your Diablos. You pick from four different classes, the Templar, Berserker, Warden, and Warlock, and then proceed to run through acts until the endgame content. Each class has four subclass trees where you can mix and match skills to make a unique character. But that does not come close to the amount of customization this game has. When you get to endgame, you unlock features that boost your customizations to the next level. For example, I was playing Summoner Warden, and there was this item that basically doubled my minion count. Customization is one of the strong features of Chronicon. I personally have just scratched the surface when it comes to replayability this game has. Thankfully there's a solid community of build makers to help those out who want some guidance on their adventure. Gameplay feels like a bullet hell with killstreaks. As you kill more you gain a counter that stacks giving bonus currency and EXP. This is one of the main gameplay features of Chronicon, to maintain your killstreaks, to stack the fat EXP bonuses. Sometimes you can get multiple levels from a single kill streak. It keeps the gameplay feeling fast and hectic in a satisfying way. There's also an infinite progression system in this game where you could forever grow your character's power, but the game also keeps up. It's actually insane the amount of features this game has, and it was only made by one person. Chronicon also just added a new DLC called Ancient Beast back in February. A whole new endgame content loop was added. Some of the new features are Ancient Beast, pets you could find and raise to bring along on your adventure. Artifacts, basically runes you could socket onto your Ancient Beast to give them special powers. Expeditions, new areas to venture in to unlock new passive skill tree. And then also Mythics, a new powerful tier of items. There's so much content in Chronicon, it actually baffles me how hidden this game is. If you are an ARPG fan and enjoy fast gameplay with addition to endless replayability, I'd 100% pick up Chronicon and its new DLC Ancient Beast. You can find Chronicon on Steam for about $20, it's well worth it. Number 4, Dauntless. Dauntless is a free to play monster hunter like ARPG. You are a slayer tasked with killing behemoths with a variety of unique weapons. You depart on hunts to kill behemoths to unlock better gear to kill more behemoths. It's a tried and tested satisfying gameplay loop. Phoenix Labs is also one of my favorite developers out there. They are honest with their player base and deliver on great content constantly. Every time I check back in on Dauntless, there's a big rework of some type, there's always new behemoths, new areas, skill tree changes, and more. Another major reason I love Dauntless is that it's one of the few free to play games out there that is not pay to win. Everything you could buy in the shop is either cosmetic or convenience. I love their vision so much I ended up becoming a founder before it was even launched and I still keep up to date with the game. It's hard for me to express all the things that are available in Dauntless in this short overview, but one of my favorite, relatively new modes in Dauntless is Escalation. It's a gauntlet like game mode where you face 5 back to back behemoths. After each victory you unlock a new power that stacks all the way to the end where you fight a legendary behemoth to unlock legendary gear. There's another mode that allows you to drop onto a huge island where there are free roaming behemoths and island challenges. On this island you can slay behemoths, gather, mine, chest, farm for currency, and participate in island events. This is personally my favorite mode because I enjoy the infinite grind that is available and the occasional surprise content in the island challenges and the unique behemoth spawns. Absolutely the biggest factor in Dauntless that keeps me coming back is the combat. It's very visceral and fast paced. If you're familiar with the Monster Hunter series, think that combat but just faster with more RPG elements. It's addicting as all hell for me. 
and there's a big room for improvement when it comes to combat. You have to learn patterns, the behemoth's patterns, your combos, spacing, using your dodge roll for iframes. The combat has high skill cap and you can definitely tell a seasoned slayer from a beginner slayer. Dauntless is also a fully cross-platform ARPG. You can play with your friends across PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and PC. It's a generous free-to-play game with no pay to win. Combat's a blast and the RPG elements are top tier. I'd highly recommend giving Dauntless a try if you enjoy visceral combat and epic boss fights. Happy slaying. Number 3. Ramble the Mad God I have to start this entry off with the Rot Meg theme song. It's such an iconic banger, I'd be doing this entry an injustice if I did not play it. There, you got at least one of the best reasons to play Rot Meg, it's beautiful soundtrack. So Rot Meg is a charming 8-bit, free-to-play, top-down, bullet-hell, permadeath, action, MMO, RPG. <laughs> Fuck. There is, there is 18 different classes, you can unlock each with their own stat breakdown, range, and abilities. Robmeg's core gameplay is built on the roguelike permadeath gameplay loop, where you progress on one character, die, unlock new things, and repeat. Ultimately, the end game is having a really strong character that slowly farms up and maxes all their stats to be a Giga Chad 8 out of 8 max stat character. But the first few hundreds of hours, you'll most likely be learning, unlocking upgrades, and dying. <laughs> I personally have never achieved a full 8 out of 8 character. But this is a game where it's not needed to fully experience all the content in the game. You can hop into almost any and everything the moment you complete the tutorial. And that's why I love Realm of the Mad God so much. This game does not hold your hand and restrict you. If you are confident, you can enter the later endgame dungeons whenever you want. But if you are too confident, get ready to be smacked down by the game. Deaths are almost a celebration in this game. It sucks initially, but you know with the fame and knowledge you've gained, you will come back stronger. I know this permadeath thing is keeping some of you guys from trying this gem of a game, so I'm, I'm going to stress it's not as bad as it sounds. Death is part of Realm of the Mad God. It's fun, it's exciting, and it's literally what makes you stronger in the game. Getting back up to max level only takes a few minutes. The end game grind comes in when you want to farm gear and stat potions to permanently increase your stats up to a cap. There's also a pet system where you can raise your pet to follow you around and provide a whole slew of unique effects, such as healing, MP healing, stuns, damage. It all comes back around because you need fame to level up your pets, and the only way to get fame is to die. <laughs> it's a fun and satisfying gameplay loop. It checks all the boxes an ARPG lover would want in the game. I want to put a highlight on the Rotmeg community. It's one of the most friendly and encouraging community I've been in in all of my gaming career. I often have players handing out free gear and assisting me in leveling or dungeons. You'll know what I mean when you start playing, and I can't help but do the same thing, it's oddly nice. There's a solid YouTube base for entertainment and guides. The developer Deca has also been doing a great job updating and providing new content for the game. They recently fully reworked the game from the ground up for the Unity engine, and that came with loads of improvements. Hence the new name they have, Realm of the Mad God Exalt. If you're looking for a fantasy-like ARPG that has engaged a gameplay with a solid community to be part of, look no further than Realm of the Mad God. Keep your background music on though while playing. It's so good. Number 2. Gunfire Reborn. Gunfire Reborn is a high-paced, roguelike FPS with ARPG elements. If you've ever played Hades, the formula is in the same vein, just an FPS format. You progress through rooms by killing enemies and unlocking upgrades that modify your abilities and gunplay. There are treasure rooms and side content you can do to earn more upgrades. A unique feature is the movement in Gunfire Reborn. Each character has their own gimmick that completely alters your playstyle and movement. For example, Tao, the bunny character. She's heavily based off of her Q ability and proccing effects when you hit enemies with your gun. I enjoy building her for the procs because she summons multiple swords that auto hones onto the enemy as I attack them. It's satisfying to watch all the numbers and the HP bars being deleted. I picked up this game when I was itching to play an FPS. It was just one of those times where I wanted fast gunplay, but not stress out about being in a PvP game. I was pleasantly surprised and quickly started sinking hours into this game. 
This is a roguelike, so there's permadeath, but each time you die, you upgrade traits that makes your character stronger. Each level is randomly generated, but you progress in a linear way of doing a few dungeons and then a big boss. As you progress in the roguelike elements, you unlock new classes and weapons that improves your replayability a ton. There are over a hundred different items and weapons to play with and each run feels unique. A quick mention, the art is a nice shell shade cartoon mix that's easy on the eyes. I usually find myself playing this game when I just want to mindlessly kill some mobs after a long day of work. Pick up Gunfire Reborn if you want a fast paced FPS game that has ARPG elements. It has tons of replayability and it's the perfect game to play in burst as a new run can last only a few minutes. It's also a good game to practice your gunplay and mouse movements. That's at least one of the main reasons I bought it. Number 1. Dungeon Fighter Online Big Daddy Doleful This is one of the ARPGs I can never stop playing. It has its hooks in me and just keeps reeling me back in. Gosh, I just love this game and I want others to experience it too. This is the game I've been playing the most throughout my whole life, hands down. DFO is a side-scrolling 2D action MMORPG that is heavily based on characters. Last time I checked, there's around 60 different characters you can make. That's insane, and it's the main reason I love this game so much. I'm an altaholic. When I play games, I make a lot of characters, and I believe DFO is the game that started that obsession with me. Each class has their own playstyle that will be hard to experience in any other game. For example, my main, Mill Grappler, the character that's on my logo, is a class that is focused on grabbing and slamming enemies. Name another MMO where 90% of a character is grabs. <laughs> the only one I could think of is maybe in fighting games with King and Zangief, but that's it. There are many more archetypes ranging from your berserkers to your sexy female mechanics. I'm 100% sure you'll find a class that at least fits your style in DFO. Other than the sheer number of characters that are in DFO, two main features draw most people in and keeps them hooked. That's the addicting action combat and both the art slash sound design. Yeah, I know, I'm kind of cheating by pairing in art and sound design together, but I believe when both are combined, that's when DFO really shines. The combats, visceral, fast, and frankly speaking, fucking beautiful. I believe this is why DFO is one of the most played games worldwide. But, but, Chewy, why are you making a hidden games list when DFO is the most played? That's because it's hidden over here in NA. I don't really know why. Maybe it's the grind that keeps people away because it's a Korean MMO, or it's sort of pay to win. I I'm just being honest with you guys. DFO is pay to win. A credit card swiper is miles ahead of you, but I will say, you can still remain competitive as a free to play player. It will be a tad bit harder as you need to grind a bit more to earn gold, but most things are available in the auction hall for in-game currency. I wouldn't let that stop you from at least giving DFO a try, it's free, and the pay to win only really affects the top 1% of the 1%. The art and sound, I don't know how else to describe it other than beautiful. Both are actually top tier. I personally like the 2D retro style DFO is going for, it's very charming. The character art is some of the best in the industry. Just walk around the town and click on NPCs, they're all unique. Visuals and combat is also top tier. Everything looks impactful, ultimates feel like real ultimates. Skills match their aesthetics and the soundtrack is just straight bangers. Before I forget, I want to talk about a feature in DFO that can turn some people off. That is the fatigue point system DFO runs on. What this is, it's a system that limits your playtime per character each day. It's not so bad because there are things you can do to extend it, and it's only per character. DFO is a game that heavily encourages making alt, hence the 60 plus characters. So I wouldn't get too bent out of shape of the FP system. <laughs> I'd probably consider it a good thing. It limits gold farming bots, it encourages alts, and it regulates progression. I like it, but... I know for some people it turns them off from the game, so I'm just being real with you guys. That being said, give DFO a try if you want an MMO grinder with addictive gameplay and tons of characters to choose from. It's free to play, I recommend you download the official client off of Neopol's website, it's far better than the Steam client. I hope you end up enjoying DFO as much as I do. Thanks for watching. I'm sure you'll fall in love with at least one of these games. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more educational and discussion content centered around ARPGs, drop me a like and a sub.
It'll help me a ton with this YouTube algorithm stuff. If you have any suggestions or thoughts, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Take care for now. Bye-bye.